Hi, it's Lily from Marino E Vino again, and today we are trying out greens. Before um, Andrea gave me her greens, I had two. I um, have various green colorways, or I guess I had three if you count teal. Um, but I only had two green colorways, or sorry, <laughs> powders, and now I have 10 to try to see how they compare. So we are going to get this party started. Um, right now I'm just doing one skein of yarn and I can, you can see that I divided it um, because I think I'm going to go around um, probably counterclockwise um, because I want to make sure that we get enough coverage to see what happens if they're spreading and stuff like that. I'm getting together some things to wipe my gloves so we don't mess with anything. I'm going to put my mask on because you don't want to breathe in... Um, acid dye powder. Um, there's a tablespoon of citric acid on there, which is probably too much, but I just did it without thinking. So I'm going to speckle them on, then push it in with my finger. There's no heat added. There's one cup of water, um, which I might add more of, um, depending on if I can get the dye to spread or not. So here we go. Um, the first one is Jacquard Acid Dye Teal 631. One thing I've noticed that I thought was interesting with the Jacquards is there's no dye lot. So I can put a lot on there. So I think perhaps they're more consistent throughout. You can see it spreading, but that's okay in the water. And when I push it down, hopefully it'll push down to the edge or and underneath. Okay, so that is teal green, which is really pretty. I do like teals. I've been working on making my own and I have and I like it, but sometimes I want it to be darker, which you can see with in the center of that, it's more saturated and dark. So probably just need a higher depth of shade. So when I make my um, liquid, um, dyes. I usually do a 1% stock solution. So I haven't tried just keeping more than that in there. This you can't really see. This is teal green from Dharma. Um, I think it's 465. I can't really read it. It's called teal green. Dharma and Jacquard are the same company, just different lines. Jacquard is a little bit more expensive on average, but I think the colors might be more consistent since, as I pointed out, there's no dye lot, which Dharma has. And sometimes it is a big change. I've noticed that with my own dyes when I've had to rebuy dye. Um, and also, wow, those are very similar. And also I've heard other yarn dyers talk about that. Okay, I don't know if I can see much of a difference, but probably when we add heat, you know, there's a chance for change. Heat can change everything, which is kind of cool. I mean, actually, I think it's really cool. <laughs> it's amazing what changing a few variables can do. Okay, the rest are not in any particular order. Yeah, those teals are very, very similar. That's really interesting. Okay, next is Sour Apple from Jacquard, or sorry, from Dharma, which is 471. Don't know if you can read it there. The dye looks kind of yellow. That's another cool thing is when you see dyes, <laughs> my son is making noise in his crib. He has not been sleeping well at night. He's two. I don't know what's going on. If you do, though, please let me know. That does look like, I don't know if I'd call it a sour apple, but like a Granny Smith, which I think most people associate with sour apple. But my go-to 
for making apple pies is half Granny Smith, half Gala, if you wanted to know. But we don't add the full amount of sugar usually when we're making apple pies, so the sugar from the Galas is helpful. Okay, this is Forest Green from Dharma. This is um, one that I've had before. I really love this color. It's a nice deep green. going to use a lot. <laughs> um, another thing I've wanted to do for a while, which I'm kind of doing now, is um, having one colorway, which I guess I could always recreate this if people want to buy it, um, is just having one green yarn, um, but with various hues. Because there's a really pretty like, like two bushes in my neighborhood when I walk to the park with the kids and they're two different shades of green and I just think they're so pretty next to each other and for years now I've wanted to dye something like that. I haven't <laughs> but I should. So that's forest green. This is the other one I've had for a while which is sage leaf. It's a lighter green. I think it makes really pretty speckles because it breaks and you get some blue in there. Now this is Andrea Sage Green and it's a different dye lot. So we shall see. I don't think I would on the right. There we go. Okay. Oh, you can see, wow, that is really mild. Huh, let me add some more sage leaf. Hers might have been older than mine. Mine, this is more of a sour apple look rather than my sage green was kind of, I don't know, like an undersea, undersea. Hmm, huh. this is not how my sage green works. That is really interesting. I'm gonna put a lot more. Maybe with this dialogue, wow, this is so different. It'll change with heat. I mean, gosh, I feel like I could just throw a ball of yarn into a pot with that sage leaf and I would get um, almost a variegated, I guess it would be more like a tonal green colorway. Very interesting. Okay, this is emerald green from Dharma. I think I'm really gonna like this. That's why I'm taking up more space. Plus we only have four more colors. That is really pretty. It almost, the edges look kind of as if forest green and that green, or in sour apple were to mix maybe, or the edges look like Kelly green and I do have a Kelly green. Is it going through? A little bit. I guess I can add a little bit more water. Although, maybe I don't want that yet. But with all these green, it's, it could be really cool to just speckle them randomly and then pour water on to see what would happen. Because I like so many greens. 
Okay, this is winter green. Although maybe I should, before that, where is it? Let's do Kelly green and compare it to emerald. Okay, this is Kelly green from Dharma. You can see it looks brown, which is very interesting. Oh, now it's turning. This is a little bit brighter than the emerald on the edges. You can see them right next to each other, but both are very pretty. This one did go through the bottom. That one almost did, but maybe there's just more water in that spot. This is really, this is fun for me. Okay, now we'll do winter green. Well, maybe I want winter green closer. Well, I can do that. <laughs> this is winter green from Dharma. Oh, that's really pretty. I feel like this winter green is a mix a forest green and emerald. I mean, I don't know how they make their dyes. I'm just speculating. Because since I'm still a small yarn dyer, I haven't bought a ton of different acid dyes, and I prefer to mix and make my own shades and stuff like that. Um, not saying like you shouldn't buy a ton of different acid dyes and make a ton of different colors, but um, yeah, I just haven't experimented as much. So this is really fun. Okay, this is moss green. I'm going to put this near the winter and you can see it's kind of like a yellowish brown inside and that's what's so cool about dyes is you can't judge a book by its cover I suppose. You can already see since it's hit the yarn it's a little bit greener. I know it's, I mean I just imagine it's going to change when I push. It's kind of like magic. It does look like moss. <laughs> so you can kind of see the depth of shade like in all of these where there's more dye and less. And we only have one more color, believe it or not. Okay, so the last color, and I'm sure there's more greens, and I haven't ever bought dyes from other companies either, so this is avocado from Dharma. There's a little bit of teal and some other speckles to be aware of. Now, I guess I didn't, I always think of avocado as a lighter green, but when I think about the skin on an avocado, this is actually more accurate, especially when it's not quite ready to be eaten. Oh, wow. This is really close to the forest green. And you can see them right next to each other. That's another thing to do with these experiments is you can see like, do I need this one? Or will one color basically match? Oh man, those are so close. 
so interesting. And then you can kind of see this, which is kind of, I mean, I know it's just a rag. I'm going to throw this away, but you can see all the colors mixed in together, which again, I think would be really pretty. Okay, since I'm done working with the powders, what I'm going to do is take off my mask. Yay, you may be able to hear me <laughs> better. I'm going to add some water. This can cause blending. It can also cause the dye to seep under. Let's start in the middle where there isn't dye, but you can kind of see sometimes the yarn lift. You can see the yarn, the dye start to spread. I'm going to do one more cut. And then I'm going to add heat. I'm going to stop the video because it's not going to be too interesting from here on out. But um, I will have pictures at the end of this video with me talking over them about how I think the heat has changed the color. Um, etc. And we'll be able to see the bottom. And if the dye hasn't penetrated the bottom, I might speckle with some moss green because that's really pretty. And that's why I did with the other two colorways is I just speckled the other side. So they'd be a little different. Usually when I dye yarns, you know, the top side of the yarn mirrors the bottom side of the yarn. But if the dye doesn't go all the way through, like you don't have to make them match. Um, with fingering yarn especially, which this is fingering yarn, you know, it's a 3D Yarn is 3D, it's not just flat, and so you get different hues even within one thread. Now that's more obvious with like a bulky weight when you're dying, but it's still pretty cool. I don't know, at least for me. So, yeah. This is a picture I took after I had flipped the yarn. There was still some dye, and you can see that there was a little bit of blending. And you can see this is the finished skein. There are some white spots, but you can see that they actually go pretty well together. And here are some still pictures of the finished skein. So I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. Um, please like and subscribe, and thank you so much.